What up, this is Patrick Hayes, and in this video I wanna talk about how to stop fighting yourself and how to understand that bliss can actually heal you. Love can heal you, and it does heal you. This is somewhat cliche, we've all heard this before, and it's quite obvious on one level, but for some reason, we, many of us, really seem to have a lot of trouble um, embodying this truth, embodying the truth that when we have a particular problem or an issue, there's something that's difficult that we're facing in our life, that actually bliss can solve that problem. Love can solve that problem. It can heal us. You know, if we have a block, bliss can heal us. It can bring us beyond that block. But how does that actually work? Now, you hear me using bliss and love almost interchangeably here. And the reason why I do that is because bliss is kind of like the uh, experiential side of love. So when you are experiencing the emotion of love, it is very blissful, right? So it's a quality of love, right? It's a qualitative experience of love is bliss. And so I might use them somewhat interchangeably here, but ultimately what I'm talking about is love and the experience of feeling love. Now, like I said, this is something you've probably heard before, but if you stick around to the end, I'm going to explain it in a whole new way that I think is really going to land. Really, I'm really going to bring it home in a way that maybe you haven't fully digested yet. So to start off, I want to talk about how we make decisions. What determines our actions in life? And one of the major, major influences on our decision-making process is the state that we're in. We are creatures that make state-based decisions. When we're in a particular state, we are really moved by the emotions in that place. And the emotional states that we're in really determine the kinds of decisions that we make. How many times have you had an experience when you've been upset in some way and then you've made a decision that you've regretted because you were upset? And after the fact, you think back on it and you're like, oh man, why did I do that? And you did it because you were in a kind of, it was almost like you were in a trance state. That emotion put you in this trance state where you made a decision that if you had actually sat and thought about it and digested all of your options there, you would have made a better decision. So we make state-based decisions. We make decisions from the kinds of states that we're in. And we've all heard the saying that you can't solve a problem from within the same consciousness that the problem was created. And this is the issue here, is that our tendency is when we run into a problem or an issue, that flusters us or puts us into a negative state. The tendency is to try to attack the problem and overcome the problem because um, a lot of why we're in a resistant or triggered state is because we're resisting the problem. We don't want to have to face it. We don't like the situation that we're in, so we want to get rid of it. And so naturally, our tendency is when, we ha when something comes up, well, we want to just fix it. We want to like take care of the problem and get rid of it. The issue with that is that when we're trying to attack the problem from the vibration in which the problem was created or the problem exists in, then we don't have the right relationship with the situation to actually find a solution or embody a solution. And this is something that is a major issue. Even though we understand this on one level, it can be really difficult to actually apply this because when we're called upon in the moment, to apply this, we are typically triggered in a trigger state because we're having to face some problem that we don't enjoy. So the question then becomes, how do we take this beyond just some mental thing that we know and how do we actually embody that understanding so that we can feel that the right thing to do is to move back into a higher vibration and then solve this problem from a higher vibration? And part of it is understanding what's actually really going on here and fully understanding that. And that is that when you are in a particular vibration, you could think of yourself as like an antenna. And whatever radio station you're tuned to are the quality of the thoughts that you are getting. So if you're in a place where you're actually defining something that you're looking at as a problem, then you're in problem consciousness. When something is a problem, this is not okay. Basically you're saying this is not okay. It needs to be different. I need to change this. Whatever this is, is unacceptable. When you're in a place where you're defining something as a problem, there's an inherent resistance to whatever it is. You're basically saying, whatever the reality is right now, this is not okay. I'm going to imagine something that it should be. I'm gonna take this fantasy and I'm gonna take this reality and I'm gonna resist the reality because I would prefer to have this fantasy, right? And, and by doing that, you're actually creating an intense resistance in your reality and you're defining whatever is present as a problem. And by defining it as a problem, literally, vibrationally, the radio station that you're tuned into will not have any solutions. All it will have is different things that reinforce the problem. You know? And while it may seem like you do solve certain problems by attacking them in a state of unrest, 
there's a much easier way to do it because how you're actually solving a problem in that space is if you're attacking it over and over, you might have like a certain aspect of you that, um, that, that is able to tune into a bit of the solution here and there and you attack it and you may kind of move the problem out of the way, but then what you've done is you've put so much energy and momentum into a vibration that you don't truly align with that you're actually seeding future problems. So you might fix the particular thing on uh, like an external circumstantial level by attacking the problem. You might move the problem out of the way, but you've then invested in a vibration for a long period of time now to solve that problem and that is like a seed to a new problem that you've planted. And you can see this play out when you're maybe trying to fix something and you do fix it temporarily, but then another part of it breaks and another part of it breaks and then you realize that the way that you fixed it the first time was actually what caused the second problem or the third problem and you can get in this kind of like downward spiral of, of creating more and more and more problems for yourself. So the key understanding here is that the vibration is ultimately what's going to give you the solution. It's ultimately what is going to make things better for you. It's ultimately what's going to heal you, whatever this is. So this could be applied to having a personal uh, emotional block. This could have a, be a mental block. This could be some sort of incapacity to be the kind of person that you wanna be. This could be some external problem with work or uh, with like technology or your, your mechanics of your car or something like that, any issue like that. The idea is that to tune into the solution, you have to be in a different vibration. They say you cannot see the forest from within it so you have to be outside of the forest so how do you get outside of the forest well actually your doorway to a higher perspective is your vibration literally and this literally shifts you to a different dimension it's a different perspective experience of the topography that you're experiencing in that moment right so it's kind of like you'd be inside the trees or you could raise your vibration and then all of a sudden you're like floating over the trees and you can see everything you can see the entire roadmap and then it makes sense to you and this is what raising your vibration does. So the process is basically when you realize that there's a particular thing that you have resistance for, you're running into an issue, to realize that and realize that to try to attack it from that space is going to do nothing but cause more problems. And actually rest in the knowing that moving into a bliss state, finding a way to get yourself into a higher vibrational state or a bliss state, which oftentimes means stop focusing on the problem, actually let it go. You know, sometimes if it's an ongoing thing where every time you, you try to do a particular thing, you have a lot of resistance with it. Maybe it's public speaking. Maybe it's uh, doing a particular kind of art or something. And every time you come back to it, you keep running into resistance or issues. Sometimes the best solution is not to just continue pushing. Sometimes the best solution is to actually take a break from it, to walk away, raise your set point frequency set point frequency, right? Raise your overall set point frequency and then from that space, you can observe or think about the particular thing or issue that you're working on and you can see it with a new light, right? You can see it from a new perspective because you're in a new vibration, right? Depending on the vibration you're in, you're gonna see things colored differently. So if you're having issues with your relationship to something, the solution oftentimes is to change your vibration enough so that when you look back at the issue, your perspective of it can change too. There's more liquidity, there's more malleability in your perspective of something because your vibration is different. It's just simply also like, you know, when you're in a great mood, if somebody gives you bad news, you're less likely to let it spin than if you're in a bad mood, right? Because you color it differently. So you have a different experience of the particular situation. And this actually works long-term with major blocks that you could potentially have. So if you have a major block against like, speaking publicly or something like that. I used to have a major block about speaking on the camera. It was a major block. The first time I tried to talk on a camera, I got so frustrated about it. I shut the camera off, I almost knocked it over. I shut the camera off and stormed away. I didn't look at another camera for months. That's how much it affected me. I had that much of an anxiety speaking to the camera. But what I did was over time, I, I, I would let the idea of speaking on a camera go for a little while. I'd still hold it as an intention deep down, but I would let it go and I would spend time raising my set point frequency, raising my vibration, getting into a higher state, getting into a happier state. When I got into a brighter state, then I would think, you know what? Maybe I could do this camera thing. Maybe I could actually you know, learn how to become more comfortable speaking in front of the camera. Maybe I could let myself go a little bit more. And the idea of it developed less and less of a negative charge 
to the point that eventually I started being able to do it and being be successful with it. And this works with, with just about anything, any kind of issue or problem. If we have a major trigger towards a problem, if we're calling it a problem, this is a problem, this is an issue, we have a resistance towards it. So how do we get past that? Oftentimes, it's good to take a break from it and walk away. See, we're told so often, just keep going, hustle, push through, push through. And that's true if, if what we're lacking is the willpower to push through. But what I found is that if you keep pushing and pushing while there's a lot of resistance, you do grow your willpower, but what you're grinding against is that other part of you that's resistant. And so it creates this like deep inner conflict, right? So while it's important to have will to be able to push through things, there's a certain point where it actually becomes self-destructive. And there's a certain point where it's actually a lot more beneficial to walk away from the thing, set it down and say, you know what? I'm going to work on my set point frequency. I'm going to work on raising my vibration so that I can change my relationship to this thing and my relationship changes due to the fact that I am a new person now and this new person, this new vibrational being that I am now can look at it and develop a different relationship with it. Now this could be misinterpreted as avoiding problems, right? As an excuse to avoid problems. So don't misinterpret it that way. I'm not saying that you give up on doing things or you just avoid them and stop thinking about them because that's actually the way to heal them. What I'm saying is that you consciously decide to put your attention elsewhere so that you can eventually come back to it from a better space. Because, like I said earlier, ultimately, what is going to be the solution to any problem, what is going to awaken you, what's going to enlighten you, what's going to make you a better person, what's going to help you grow, what's going to make your life more balanced, is a growth in love within you. It's a raising of your frequency. It is the capacity to have loving bliss experiences on a regular basis. This is what's going to shift you energetically. This is what's going to lift you up. You can't think your way out of your problems. And this is where most people have things mixed up. Is you can't actually think your way out of the stuck spaces that you're in. You're going to have to vibe your way out of it. And oftentimes you vibe your way out of it by quitting thinking. I mean, sometimes you can use thoughts to help your vibration. But oftentimes it's like you just gotta let it go. If every time you think about something it ties you into this web of frustration, it's like sometimes you just gotta let it go, raise your vibration and then come back to it. But ultimately, what's going to make everything better in your life, simply put, is increasing your love, increasing your capacity for love. So whatever helps you bring more love into your life, going out into nature, looking at the sunset, meditating, anything that helps you experience the visceral experience of love, which is experienced as bliss, is going to make your life better. So the more time you can set aside to do something like that, while still staying balanced and showing up in life as you need to for your responsibilities, but the more time that you can spend where you really make a, a dedication to experiencing bliss, to experiencing love, and putting yourself, doing whatever you need to do to bring yourself into that experience, the more you do that, the more that that is going to translate into everything else in your life. And there's no right or wrong way of doing it, but you know what's right for you because you can feel it. And you know what that space feels like when you're feeling love, when you're feeling bliss. If you don't, check out more of the videos that I put out. I have a lot of videos where I talk about different techniques or different things that I've used to be able to get into these higher spaces. And also try to find other like-hearted people near you that you can share experiences with. Because oftentimes, in order to have a love experience, in order to have a high vibrational experience, sometimes it's really useful to be around other people that can have that experience with you. Dancing with people, having fun, um, joking around, playing sports, different things where it gets you moving, gets you out of your head, and it just gets you opening up. These things are so, so powerful because ultimately, like I said, it's being able to take this higher vibrational space and then shine that vibrational space into the different areas of your life and even internal into the different areas of your inner psyche that ultimately is what heals you, what solves your problems and lets you know that what you thought was a problem was actually not a problem. It was an opportunity for you to grow this love and shine this love into your life and into yourself in a new way. So thank you so much for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes. Like, subscribe, share with friends. If this video was useful for you and you think it may be useful for somebody else that you know, please share it with them. I would really appreciate for this message to get to somebody that could really benefit from it. So again, thanks so much for tuning in and I will talk to you next time. One love.